Good morning, everyone. This is Jeff from the Cyber Pro Podcast, back with another episode today. We're going to be talking with Wendy Overton. Wendy, hello. Jeff, how are you today? Excellent. Thank you for taking the time. We're excited to speak with you. So let's start with who you are and what you do. Sure. So Wendy Overton, I'm a director in Optiv Cyber Strategy Practice. So I'm a consultant. Um, I help other companies, other security leaders to basically figure out where their cybersecurity or general security programs sit, uh, where they want to go, and how to get there. That is a big task. And so let's talk about that. Cybersecurity is something that changes all the time, is moving very quickly. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, and especially now, we're going to talk about you know, how we've gone into remote working, now we're potentially coming back. What do you find is the most fascinating aspect of being a cyber professional during these eh, interesting times? Yeah, that they are. Um, You know, I think that this has really opened up the door for a lot of threat actors, right? And it's also opened up a lot of eyes as to the impacts that IT and through that security can really have on a business, right? So a lot of people had to transition to work from home. Maybe now they are going to come back, which, you know, could be better for the business. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, you know, that's really opening up not only security professionals' eyes, but also business leaders' eyes, too, to um, the impacts that that can have, whether it be positive or negative. So it's pretty interesting and especially interesting seeing how that's being impacted across different inter- industries as well. Yeah, <clears throat> we spoke a lot in the last year about how cybersecurity is really a top concern as we move to the remote workforce. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, as you just mentioned, there's a possibility of us starting to go back to the offices or some sort of a hybrid model. Sure. And right before we started the podcast, you talked about the great resignation. And I think that that's something yeah. that's really on people's mind these days, just because You've got all of these folks that you've probably worked with for a good amount of time. You you run like a well-oiled team. And then all of a sudden, Monday morning, Joey and Bobby aren't there anymore. Yeah. So how does that affect your viewpoint on what you see coming up? Yeah. So one of the areas that I actually focus on in the consulting world is insider risk, right? And so what you just talked about, Jeff, really lens to that insider risk lens, right? So not only from a security perspective in the sense of making sure that, you know, those people that are leaving aren't taking things, but really also just making sure that people kind of feel happy at their job, right? People Mm -hmm. kind of forget that insider risk is not only about reducing uh, those threats, but reducing the risk, which can also lend to making sure that people actually like where they work, right? Feel happy, feel satisfied. Because if they are, they're probably less likely to do something malicious, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, kudos to you. That's another really interesting point, right? So let's dig into that one a little bit. We spend a lot of time on this podcast talking about external threats. Mm-hmm. Thing, threat actors, threat vac- vectors, attack vectors that come in from the outside. Okay. And folding in the great resignation, people being happy, mm-hmm. and your holistic view of risk management uh, on and offline goes back to a lot about internal things and people. Let's yeah. talk about that for a second. Yeah. Yeah. What, so, what, do, you, what do you see as, as being some of the challenges that companies might face in that regard? Yeah. So, you know, part of the reason why people are resigning is they're finding other companies that maybe are just going to plan and pay them more, right? It may not be that they're unsatisfied or whatever the case may be at their current job. They just see an opportunity to to increase their own, you know, value, right? Some, in some ways, maybe that is because they're underpaid. In other cases, it may not be. Um, But, you know, right now with COVID and kind of everything else going on in the world, You know, we're seeing a lot of people that are just under stress externally to their jobs as well, which sometimes then pushes into their workplace satisfaction, right? Maybe they don't feel like they're truly supported to have a good work-life balance, or 
maybe they don't feel like they're getting the support that they need at their job and it's making it harder for them to deal with those stressors outside of life. So with that, it's causing them to potentially rethink their current job, whereas maybe otherwise they wouldn't. Or, you know, others are being affected by their dissatisfaction and therefore are starting to, you know, be concerned about whether they should stick at their job, right? There's lots of different things that we see and how this plays out, but really a lot of what it comes down to is culture, right? And culture is a really big impact or has a really big impact on the way that um, people feel satisfied at work, of course, and then also the way that they feel like they are part of maybe the security apparatus, maybe the overall mission of the way, the things that the company does, things like that, right? And so that then could potentially cause more threats, could cause more dissatisfaction, whatever the case may be, from people who otherwise may not have had too much issue a couple of years ago, right? So we're seeing a lot of shift in the way that we're having to think about insider risks because no longer is it just, oh, well, you know, someone got kind of pushed away to another company and we got to make sure that they're not taking our IP. Now you're kind of having to worry a lot more about day-to-day -day satisfaction and things like that that maybe aren't necessarily the types of things that people focused on before. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, that we could talk about that for a long time. Uh, you know, uh, some of our viewers may want to learn a little bit more about you, Wendy, a little bit more about the company that you're with and, and some of the things that you, uh, that you deal with and, and, and you share with your clients. Uh, if they are interested, what is the best way for them to get a hold of you? Sure, yeah. So you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, Wendy Overton, or you can email me at wendy.overton at optive.com. Awesome. Thank you. We have two minutes left. Let's talk about something fun that I don't want to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> question number five and the final question is, tell us a little bit about your favorite piece of retro technology that makes you smile. Yeah. So I'm not a huge gamer, but one of the things that always just brings a smile to my face is some of those more retro uh, gaming systems, right? We talked a little bit about Atari and the like, but the things that really bring a smile to my face that were a big part of my childhood and growing up after that was Nintendo 64 and a Sega Genesis, right? It makes me so sad that the Sega went away because there was so much fun and that's kind of where Sonic started, right? And love, love a good Sonic and catching all those rings, right? But um, yeah, got to say some of those old school gaming systems and love still playing some of those retro games as well. Brilliant. Brilliant. Love it. Thank you again, Wendy, for your time. Again, my name is Jeff. This is the Cyber Pro Podcast. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Goodbye. You made it to the end. Thanks for watching the Cyber Pro Podcast today. You can find more content here and here and there.